Hello, my name is Luis Algueiro. In today's today lab exercise, we will cover autographs and in PyTorch. Let's uh, So we will cover some basic uh, operations like in PyTorch, and also we will explore the central package autograph that is really really necessary for deep learning um, algorithm that it provides us the automatic uh, differentiation for all the tensors and it's doing by run so it depends on how you code and in, in each iteration is changing the all the differentiation and all the operators uh, for these uh, tensors so let's compute, let's see how it's work. And uh, let's uh, also define dynam the, some dynamic computational graph. Let's see the concept and how it's work, this uh, dot backward method that is really useful for defining uh, the operations in deep learning. Let's start by importing all the packages necessary to run this uh, exercise. So let's import torch. Let's also import uh, torch that nm, the API for the neural network layers and the operations that also have available the torch that optim for the optimizers uh, available in PyTorch. Let's support as well NumPy. Matplotlib is a Common uh, uh, plot uh, package for in Python. And let's start. So, uh, as this statement said, launch, launch our story. Uh, we will use the touch that tensor to define some tensors and to define this graph. This is an uh, acyclic graph, right? And in this exercise, we will use a uh, two tensor. We will multiply two tensors and to store in another tensor C, right? Let's see uh, how we can build and define this dynamic computational graph, right? So let's start by defining torch dot tensor of one, right? And the Y for the Y will be torch that tensor and multiply this tensor and print the tensor c so we can see that's already defined the uh, the multiplication so it's all working good and it as we already saw in the previous exercise that the tensors had a lot of uh, attributes that we can use and also we can explore la a little bit more all the all the properties that already have defined uh, the tensor let's define first a helper function like uh, we can describe tensor right and we can just uh, well, let's go x and the name of the distance, right? Just to see a little bit more with the properties of available for distance. Let's here a little bit of factor to print here uh, the name. Tensor, me, name, right? And let's define also another uh, another description. The data it should be x dot data. They are also available. Let's. Uh, but uh, we already see that required grad is another another attribute that is available for 
computing for tracking all the operations, uh, all the definitions of the, the, the derivatives. So we can explore a little bit more like uh, the attributes graph function that are also available here. Let's see how it's work. Let's define also another description like required graph. Start requires that and bring as well the gradients or the tensor will be that just dot grad is attribute and we can print all as well the grad function that are related to these gradients. So that function and it also could be another yeah seems okay. Let's let's just close this one. Okay, let's describe a little bit more the tensors that we already find. Mm. Yeah, let's see that the name of these tensors and the tensor X that has a tensor of data with value of one. Wow, just a scalar. We didn't set already the requires that attribute. So none of the gradient and also didn't store a function uh, related to the gradients. Explore the other tensors and describe as well for the Y and for the C. Okay, we have already seen here that all this tensor had uh, just printed all, all the values. That's it, all right, well, perfect. So let's play a little bit more with the tensor. Let's define again the torch that tensor, right? And let's see that uh, if we define only the data, we can define the data type, the device that it should be, uh, the device uh, should be um, when we place uh, the values to, uh, to a GPU, for instance, it's, it will, yeah, we will explore this function later. And the required scratch, yeah. Find the required scrap Q in this we indicated if we set this to true, we are indicated just to uh, the actually uh, to, uh, to PyTorch that uh, all the to, to, to start the tracking of the functions and also all the uh, derivatives. From this, uh, from this uh, occasion, right? In this occasion, we are request what set to true for this tensor, and it will start tracking all the operations uh, and also the functions uh, depending on this uh, tensor, right? Just for putting values here. Okay, let's describe again these tensors, we can just copy this cell and paste a little bit more here. Well, we have seen that it changed a little bit. For the tensor C, it's starting to tracking all the operations that it should uh, 
that this is a result of a multiplication between variables and starting to track the required gradients for uh, for distance or so. In these occasions, there are nothing uh, calculated yet, not not a gradient, not a function for distance or so. It's okay, so just starting to uh, to realize that it should be uh, track all the operations and and so on, right? So how we can we can define we can calculate these derivatives just by tracking with this function the backward function let's see that in the in the help of the documentation that it will compute the gradient related to the graph that we have defined right so there is a lot of uh, there are others uh, attributes here we can set the gradient, uh, retain graph, and let's create a graph. Let's explore later these functionalities. We can press say, Z that work backward, and let's grab again these functions. Yeah, let's press. Well, we can see that now we have a gradient here, right? A tensor with value of two, that is a result, uh, that's the gradient of this uh, operation. Now, and any time that you you recall, you call a dot backward, it will calculate these gradients uh, depending on the graph, right? And we can see here how it's work in this description graph. And we can see that any time that you call a uh, dot backward, it's uh, another node is added to this graph. So in, in this node, it store uh, the function that are uh, uh, that are resulting from this uh, from this um, multiplication function, right? And for scalar, it's automatically added a tensor, a scalar tensor dot one, that in this case indicates that uh, the chain rule is the last, uh, it's the ending of the chain rule. So it just uh, from this function is uh, compute the partial derivative in this occasion and store the value to uh, the dot grad attribute to the tensor, right? So it's really easy, it's really smooth to work with, uh, the, to calculate the derivatives that are coming from different kind type of uh, function operations, right? So, and also you can see that the graph function is a reference to the multiplication backward, right? So you can see here, yeah. So, so far, it's not it's not too hard to uh, to initialize these uh, these functionalities and this um, well, this toy example. Uh, as we mentioned already, the C backward torch that uh, tensor uh, for one is automatically added to uh, by default. But in the case of an n-dimensional array, you should express explicitly the the end the, the end of the chain rule, right? So it should be the same. It's the same dim dimensionality as the tensor C itself. Let's see how it works. So on this this occasion, yes, yeah, we can this raise these cells that we didn't use. Let's define again. Let's see the torch that once. We can define as well. We can require graph set as true. And also we can define 2.0 for torch that is Let's see, Z should be 
Uh, so to things work, yeah, okay. Let's describe the tensor X and pass the name of this tensor and let's describe also the tensor C and just pass the name as well. Let's just see how it works, right? So we can see that the results is a uh, one dimensional with three values. The values are two, and the values in this case for the X tensor, it's one, right? Great, great. So it's the requirements grad I already set you true, but not a gradient is already uh, calculated. So let's calculate the C dot mark work. And this just this just we already know that we should we should express the gradients for uh, n dimensional array the end the end gradient of the chain rule by default. In the case of an n dimensional array, it should be explicit. So by just 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 around this cell that we should we should provide us an error. That's you know? can be explicitly created only for the scalar output. Uh, already, we can already, we've already seen that. Notice that once we express the, um, it should be on the same shape as C, right? So it should be a shape. that once with the shape of C. And we can also remember, if you remember the first, Lecture one slide and also just like press and see, we should work and let's describe answer in the case in the case of this. Right, we have we see that also works is calculated obtaining the gradients that's a tensor of a one dimensional tensor with three values, uh, all by two, right? The result of a partial derivative of this this graph, this uh, computational dynamic graph, and it's also working. So, so far so good. And let's copy this. Oops. This cell by here. And uh, one thing that I forgot to mention that these um, these gradients are stored in the dot gradient attribute and it's accumulated means that it sums up every time that it has a, a gradient it's called a backward and if there is a backward it sum up to that value right let's hold it here um let's see yeah we can see we can show this and uh, this operation let's call the backward operation again and in this occasion yeah it was through uh, an error right this is not a problem because we are trying to uh, to show how it's work this retain graph operation this retain graph uh, attribute and it should be any time any time that you are calling that dot backward all the all the graph it's already a compute it computes the derivatives right and all the graph is already a, a gone by that time that it computes and uh, so in this occasion you should uh, you should indicate that uh, Python should retain the graph for few further operations in the case that is needed, all right? So in this occasion, we can just represent here. Oh, as we already see, that is not defining already the graph, so we should already, we should define again. So X, let's describe again this tensor X. Uh, oops, so it's not uppercase A, it's just uppercase. Yeah, we can see that uh, it's having the gradients already. 
let's also define the graphs again on this occasion. Yeah, we can see that it's already defined and let's retain again the graph for further uh, backward operations, right? So we can see that now for the X uh, tensor, the gradients also increase and now it's a change, right? So it's in the case of uh, perfect, so it's accumulated in the first operations, it's only a, a one dimensional array with values of two, and now it's a one dimensional array with values of six. So it's all dependent of on the uh, dot backward and the times that we accumulate. Any time that we uh, call the backward, it can compute the partial derivatives. So it's added to the attribute in the dot graph uh, of this test, right? So you can see here, that's your... So let's build uh, the, our first neural network and let's try it a little bit. So in this occasion, we don't, uh, we will use the NN package of PyTorch that all the neural, neural layers all are already predefined. So let's let's import again just to see okay, just for you to see how we can build a neural network so for building a neural network you should define a class for instance my net we will call it my net right and we will import we will inherit all the modules that are available for this class in this package, right? The dot mod. For any for any uh, neural network that we define, you should define two functions: the init function, right? And oops, the init function, and also the forward function. Forward. So for each function, in the init part are uh, defined the constructor of, of all the layers, but it, uh, in the function, in the forward part of this, uh, on the function forward, that we are connecting all the layers that we are defining in the init part, right? So we, let's, you here we're defining the cell, right? And also, we super we uh, make a super class that just uh, generating all the initial initialization methods that are available in its in the, uh, an end module, right? Here, yeah, right. And let's call, uh, we, define, we can define the, our first multi-layer perpsentrum, MLP, right? So uh, multi-layer perpsentrum has uh, fully connected layers, right? Fully connected one should be a uh, linear. Linear is our first operator and it applies a linear transformation in this type of operation, right? It's a like a combination of all neurons and awaited sums and also a bias here. Great. Um, the attributes, the, the input variables are the in future, let's start by three, and the out future, let's say 20. Okay. Let's call the activation for this layer, should be could be uh, an H uh, applied an element wise. So you can see that uh, well, there's a is a well common known uh, activation layer. So it's not necessary to use uh, to define any any input variable to that layer. Let's define again another fully connected 
layer, but also be a linear, right? So in this occasion, we will see the as an input variable the, the amount of uh, the the output variable of the first layer. And let's define again a three. Okay. Yeah, just those three. That's okay. And let's define how are uh, these layers in the init part function are defined. Right? So we can call a variable, let's call h1, like for the self dot f. Oh, yeah, we should also define the self and some input variable like x, right? And this x is, should pass as an input variable of the first layer, right? And then this, this output layer should be Output hidden layer should be like pass from the to the activation layer, right? So we have already had this first act a hidden layer H1, and let's call the output of this neural network by just connecting the F fully connected to that should receive this. H1, right? The H1, the high in one layer, and let's return this output layer, right? Great. So we have already defined this, the first neural network, right? So we can instantiate this class. Let's find our first, first, our first instance, so our first object here, and it's printed how works right we can see that our net is composed by a fully connected layer and an activation and then a fully connected to all the bias are set to two and this is the configuration this is architecture of the layer right we can we can import yeah let's import uh, another library torch that summary it's really important and import from import from this torch summary import summary is a really is a this is a developed by the community and it's on developing so it's really useful to explore let's see another properties of this network and in this network we should pass to the summary we can pass the and the instance of the, the network in and you should all also is passed as as an input variable and some the the input configuration of the layers right we can see that is how it's connected it also uh, show us the numbers of parameters that are calculated total trainable parameters right and also well in this occasion it's a really tiny neural network but it's really useful to see all the connections between the layers and in the indication that we have a ski combination that you will see later on in the in another lectures all the amount of memory that is required for storing these uh, layers so it's really useful there are a lot of things that you can explore with this library torch that summary all right we can also describe uh, let's explore a little bit more with the, the functionalities that has these R layers oh so the first one is the activation it's a tanage, right? So let's uh, let's play another layer, fully connected one, and let's explore a little bit more. Yeah, it's a bit bias here. So we can see that it's a tensor. What the shape of this tensor? 
So we can see that for each neuron that we have, for each output neuron, we have 20 neurons, right? So it's a uh, one-dimensional array with one-dimensional tensor and, and uh, with, 20, with 20 values. It's the same. We, it's, we can explore the weights, right? The weights from the uh, from this fully connected layer, and we can see that is a way is a two dim uh, one dimensional array, two dimensional uh, tensor by with twenty rows and three columns. Let's describe this uh, this form this tensor, right? We can we already have defined this tensor sky tensor um, function so we can should provide the tensor right so the name of will be fully connected one weights yeah we have re we obtained the name in the tensor this is all the values that are already pre-initialized, so random values. You can see that requires scratch is already defined as true because, because it's how any any time that you instantiate a, a, a class for a neural a neural network, it's all the layers are defined defined the requires scratch true. They are ready for the dot walk backward operations. So but not uh, any gradients and any functions already defined yet. Uh, let's, let's, okay. Can another thing that we can we can explore? Yeah. Well, let's define. Let's train this neural network. For training, we should define two more things, like the loss, right? The loss function. And in this occasion, we can use the dot. We can explore a little bit more the uh, the NN package. All right. Oh, we can see that there are these binary cross entropy losses. So there are a lot of losses that we can explore here. We can define the um, mean square error loss. Let's find here the mean square error loss. Let's use this one. And we should also yeah, let's explore the optim the optimis, the optimizers that are available. There are the ADAM, the stochastic gradient descent, uh, RMS probe. So there are a lot of functionalities here. And if we we can see also for the stochastic gradient descent. There are uh, parameters and learning rate. So we can see that there are a lot of possibilities here. In the oh, there is also an example here. So we should express in a dot parameters for this for this uh, optimizer. And let's also define in this occasion the learning rate. Right. Oh, let's first let me see here. Well, let's spread let's press a little bit more these uh, net dot parameters. And the net dot parameters it will it will uh, I will provide a list net dot parameters okay. and for p in params let's print these parameters yeah we can see that it's returning as the tensor that this tensor the first tensor requires grad. This second tensor should be the bias that also requires grad. This tensor now, the second tensor for the second uh, linear operator that also requires grad. So there, this should describe also 
the first values for this initialized uh, this initialized uh, neural net, all right? That's already passed as a as an input argument to the stochastic gradient descent. So, uh, what else we should define? Yeah, it's already okay. We can try now. We can train our little, our, our tiny little um, net, neural network. Let's define a function for training. Let's train and this function for training uh, should receive the network, the loss function, and also the optimizer, right? And also let's uh, put the argument a number of iterations, number of iterations for training this network. Um, mm -hmm. Well, the strain like a uh, kind of here. Let's train a little network, a neural network that should map from a from a uniform um, tensor, a tensor with random values from a samples from a uniform distribution to uh, to a tensor from zeros. So it will map this, and we we will track the loss values as well, and should plot it. That is a really good uh, exercise to do. First, let's define our input value, right? Torch that um, should be run, right? And let's provide 10 samples many times. And our ASTA columns, it should be three, right? Let's uh, pass this vector to our network right and let's calculate oh let's define first this loss history um 20 and should be on this first here and this then what else we have, oh, we can, you know, we can calculate the loss coming from this loss function. That should be the difference between the output layer and the torch that zeros like, right? From the output, right? It should be a zeros, right? We also, perfect. We have, we have uh, our loss here. Yeah, we should. And uh, track the loss by adding to by appending to this loss history. So loss is a the loss is a tensor. We should recover only the item from this tensor. And what else we can do? Oh, we should print right. Let's print that if um, the number of iterations, number of iterations are divided by some any kind that any 50, any 50 times it will just, uh, yeah, it will just um, print this value, right? Just print this value and loss okay. what else let's plot yeah we plot plot right this loss of the okay. this loss also this loss function we can plot we can plot this time or not yeah we can plot this time or 
Yeah, something's missing. Oh, yes, 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 yeah, I remember. And we find the train, it should be. We find an end line for the in range should be the number of iterations. Okay. Let's hold on the number of iteration. So anytime here, we are calculating these values. So in the loss and we can paste all oh, it's not necessary to find this inside. Perfect. So it's one okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, explain this loss history. Yeah. And also let's bring some labels or this uh, both our loss. This is the number of iterations, right? And it's already defined and also defined the loss. Great, so far so good. But oh, we didn't use the optimizer. So anytime that the optimizer should provide unsteadiness. So to perform on the step of this stochastic gradient sensor. <laughs> so our our in, input and tensor is here, so the network is here, it's calculating the loss, it's appending the loss, the optimizer is already yeah. Anytime any iteration it will perform one step for the stochastic gradient descent. And then it will print any 50, any 50 iterations because the loss then it will uh, plot the results. Define the house. Yes, okay. Oh, those history spectrum in engine. So great. Okay. Perfect. Let's train our neural network. Let's pass the network. Let's pass these functions. Oh, let's call a new different, right? Just two. We can go differently. Not to get confused. Right, so we can pass here the loss and as me. We can also pass the optimizer and let's print it for let's train it for five hundred iterations. Great. Oh, you can see that now. Yes, anytime so it's not working to print it this way. Let's print a little more. It's working a little bit more with our helper function. So any fifty operations, right? So it's printing here. Uh, No, what's the problem? The problem here that we didn't, that the first thing to do is to cure the gradients, right? So the optimizer, two, two things are missing here. So the optimizer dot zero. Yeah, we should, um, My answer should be my answer, right? Okay, my answer dot which we should uh, 
first uh, zero, uh, yeah, we should, all the gradients should be zero anytime sure and that is how the operation is starting. And not remember because we are adding the, the gradients anytime to the to the dot attribute of each tensor. So we should all the all the gradients are zero, should be zero at the first moment that we are calculating the uh, the back propagation. So also we can uh, we should back propagation so we should use the back work operator to the loss. All the loss are are a distensor here and also uh, are containing the errors of the functions here, right? The errors from the output and the dot and the zeros tensor. So the dot backward should return the gradients for a for all the tensors and the optimizers will take these gradients and perform an stochastic gradient descent step. Right? You can see here that if any number of iterations, you can print here. Yeah, right. Good work, yeah, we can see that now our loss is going down, it's going near to zero. And for in this occasion, we can see that it's our loss is decreasing. So our algorithm, our neural network is improving each time. You can see here the losses or right. So we are trained, we have trained our first neural network. Let's let's see how it's work with uh, one when the sample variables in this occasion are just ones right they are not by uniform distribution let's see how it works right so we can pass our output here from this network that we are already trained right see the print of this tensor right so it's almost coming to zero so it's uh, the grad function as you can see here the from this output is the adding operation let's describe a little bit more but it's not necessary yeah we can describe but it's not necessary to describe it now let's print the loss for this for this function, let's loss NSA. This out and torch that zeros like, right? The same result. So you can see that our loss is almost zero. So it's one to the minus three, right? Let's just um, distance check a network, that, a new network, let's call new non-trained network. Non-trained, right? Now uh, it should be an instance from the my net network, the same, right? And let's print again this value. So for this application, this R oh yeah, we should pass for this O2. Let's call O2. And for the non frame network, we can pass again the same input value, right? This occasion this will be O2, and in this key in case it should be O2. Let's see how it works. So we can see that if we uh, non-train this network, the loss is bigger, right? And that's if because we didn't train properly, just we did a, a toy example, but there are a lot of um, ways to do it more properly. So you, you will see in further class how this uh, should be done, right? This occasion for this study example, 
we can see that our uh, train network is working. Okay. If we train for more time, we should decrease this value. Okay. So uh, there is an there is occasion that we cannot, uh, we don't want to calculate the gradients, like for instance in some inference predictions and uh, just to test in our network. So we can avoid the compute the computation of these gradients with this uh, this uh, keyword with this uh, torch the no grads so which speed up our uh, computation process like by two or three times normally. So let's see how we can we can use this uh, no torch no gradients uh, functions. Let's see. We can define it again. This torch dot once. Let's try this one. Ten by three, and with torch no gradients for this this part. Let's uh, calculate the output value for this train network, right? And let's calculate this loss this loss for this part so let's calculate loss and, and mean square error the output it should be the torch dot zeros for this part okay let's print a little bit the loss function this loss value loss that item right and let's describe this and so let's and we can see right oh because our in Recommend side, what's the couple of things? Oh, what's going on? Yeah, I should be. That's once. Shift. And it. Values. Right. Watch that once, right? Oh, okay, yeah, so you're saying here. Here is like, yeah, sorry about this interruption. So, um, yeah, in this occasion, we are returning the loss. The loss is this value, so it's really close, yeah, it's, it's close into zero. And we can see that it's the required scratch set to false. And also, it's not gradient or not gradient are calculated for this operation for this part of these uh, torch not gradients part, right? So it's really useful in the case of uh, in the evaluation process of the neural network. There. And another thing that we can uh, we can show is the dot detach of the tensor 
this is really useful in the case that we can we are just uh, training and uh, some part of the neural network for instance here we can define we can leave the first fully connected layer to behave like it was defined at the beginning and just train the second part of the neural network right so let's define the another class my net my no my let's uh, touch the Let's call my detach net, right? Let's copy all the part that we let's reuse really our code by copying this part, right? This class. In this application it will be my detach net will be here the same and here we can define the, our first hidden layer to be detach so in this occasion it won't calculate the gradients for the first uh, first fully connected layer so, okay and let's instantiate our my detach net plus my let's print this network like uh, we can see that is the same it's the same we have the same structure the same architecture um, Let's print these parameters. It will be the same. It should be the same. My detach network dot parameters. Or in param. Let's print E. So it's already telling us that it are the same structure. The request graphs are set to true. The request graph here in the it's also so it's all similar. So what's what's happening here? So we had said that for this occasion it was touch or the hidden layer, but we will see how it's working, right? It, right now in the first view we can see that it looks like a similar our 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 non-detached uh, network okay, let's train this detached network so it's my detached network the loss function it will be the same loss function here and also the optimizer right and uh, optimizer and also for 500 500 iterations oh so as expected our loss function is oscillating between some values here it's not decreasing that we have already seen in the the first occasion when we uh, obtain this uh, in the first moment uh, we train our network and let's print a little bit more the loss function the is function so we can use we can use this sample here just to see how it's work in this operation right explore a little bit more in this occasion, we define a torch dot once, a tensor by three, and we pass for this network. Let's print the loss function between the output and the zeros of the same shape. And in this occasion, we can detach network. It should be as the location we instantiate 
any because we have trained our my detached network so it will pass the same input we can pass the same input value and all the same here and we can see that's well that's a really big loss for this uh, non my this detached network but what's coming on here let's print let's describe some tensors like uh, my detached network dot fully connected layers like one and like the weights right this tensor we will pass the same name so it will be fully connected one and for the my detach network right and let's compare with the first layer so it will be the net dot for the connected layer and here is all the non detached fully connected weights here weights so we can see that all the gradients for the fully connected one is fully connected one detached so this is a tensor and you can see that squares grad is such a true but non gradients are calculated for this part so it's or it's like not storing any gradients so it's like a it can update any gradient so this tensor it remain the same as in the moment that it was initialized right and in the non-detached so we can see that all the gradients all the values are here and all the gradients for this tensor are zero so it's calculating some gradients and in this occasion are just zero values we can see the difference here so it's like a, a way to uh, just uh, uncouple the, ne the neural network by freezing some layers and just training some layers it's really useful depending on the application in other applications like uh, uh you reusing other networks and just training a little bit power from some different applications uh, transfer learning uh, applications right so this is this is the the ending of this uh, lesson but uh, these are the reference that are uh, really useful to explore and and this is all for this lecture uh, i hope you have enjoyed and thank you for watching